Hello and welcome to a kooky corner of YouTube. Um, today I am going to show you some of my favourite books on textile art, specifically textile mixed media -y, sculpture -y, <laughs> that kind of shabazzle. Uh, basically I have a ton of these, so I've picked out my favourites of the moment, um, ones that I'm kind of referring to on a daily. And so I'm going to kick off with the first one, which is this. It comes in a series. It's called The Textile Artist and their Search Press books. Let me see how many I've got in this section. I've got five of them. A um, couple of them are library books. So it's a good tip if you can't actually find or locate one of these or you don't want to spend out the money, check in your local library for the title. And I'm sure... Sometimes you have to pay a reservation fee of about a pound, but it's cheaper than buying the whole book if you don't really want it. But hopefully, by the time I've gone through these, you'll, you'll have a, a good idea of what they're about. So the first one is one that I found recently. Um, when I was making my um, cups, <laughs> I've been making some wire cups for an Alice in Wonderland um, challenge. Uh, which has um, uh, 10 different artists in it and they threw it out to everybody else so I thought I would join in as well and I made this sculptural wire cup with additions it's even got a little handle and a little saucer there and I did this spoon now this spoon was from this book this one was from me looking at pictures <laughs> and trying to figure it out and then I found this book I didn't know that there was a book, so uh, that's the spoon, look, it's the spoon, it's the spoon. <laughs> so yes, this first one is an actual godsend. Uh, it's a practical guide to mixed media wire sculpture, so you're involved in textiles, papers, whatever you want, and it's by Priscilla Edwards for Search Press. Let me see if I can take you up a bit because she, a bit low, there we go. Okay, so it's really good. This series is really good because it gives you practical things that you can do. Um, some of them are more like look at books, but this is definitely practical. See, if I'd have had this when I was making this, if I was making the key teacup, it would have been so much easier. But no, I suppose I learned a lot from figuring it out my own way. So you've got an introduction, materials, equipment, inspiration, techniques, um, colour and style, and then the Sylvania Spoon is the first um, thing that's in this book that you can sort of follow along with just put my glass on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you've got projects that you can work along with and each one you build on your knowledge. So you've got an introduction, tools, it's all the usual things that you know that you usually get in these books. Uh, one of the things I considered was getting some um, wax because uh, she uses batik wax to attach her things um, and I have got some wax that I have ordered um, and I've also got a melting pot and I don't know if that would work as a wax pot but uh, I'll give it a go but I didn't have it when I made my spoon so what I did was I just used Mod Podge <laughs> instead of wax it gives you a similar kind of thing so Use what you've got, as I say. Additional materials and inspiration. So we've got developing your ideas. I didn't do any of this, which I should have done, and I will do in future because I want to make some more of these sculptural things. They're, they're really cool. Um, so bringing your ideas to life. Let's get into the first. The Sylvania spoons are like her first thing then you've got you build on it you can build cups three-dimensional shapes it takes you through everything which is ideal uh, let me take you to the spoons where's the spoons a free machine embroidery as i say the sky's your, the sky's the limit when you get to doing these things okay so textual project so this is um 
a nice simple one you can do is a flower to start off with but then the souvenir spoon is the one that I was doing for mine and it takes you through picture by picture step by step and then into adding the fabrics so she used sheer fabrics and things I use mulberry paper and mod podge but you know you do what you do <laughs> and then all the little additions and things look at them they're so cool I really love them so much so yeah you can do birds and what was the other one I really liked oh that was it like the flowery one and then you can build like a little you've got background of a pair of antique gloves with all these flowers added into it so you can be as experimental as you want to be there was another one that i loved as well oh that that was a cup i wish i had that <laughs> I make my cup. <sighs> but hindsight is a great thing love that cup of earl grey so you could make a tea cup for each of the teas very good so that is a highly recommended sculptural textile art by priscilla edwards and it's published by search press under the textile artist banner which is important because the next one is also this is felt and fiber art this is one i got from the library yeah got the library book there and this is it's a similar format takes you through all the materials getting started influences techniques and then at the back you will get some um, some projects to work on now this one was quite interesting because when I got this one I was I just done my Alice in Wonderland thing but literally Alice in Wonderland tea and cakes how cool was that So this is using Alice in Wonderland as um, as um, inspiration, and it takes you through what the author did, all the different sketches they made, and then how to create different aspects of the thing to make something that is beautiful. That I love. Let me show you that there. The tea, the tea cups, and the cake, and the hearts from the Queen of Hearts. The finished piece there it is in the Alice in Wonderland collection and this was a curious and curious address look at that you can just make squares and squares and then join them all together to make a wearable how cool is that anyway that's that one felt and fiber art as, as I say there's I think I've got five of these I think there's about eight or ten in the series this one's Lair Paint and Stitch. This is also a library book. This is by Wendy Dolan for Search Press. And this one is Creating Textile Art Using Freehand Machine Embroidery and Hand Stitching. Well, I was more interested in the hand stitching part of it. Um, I have done free machine embroidery before, but I quite like just sitting and stitching with my hands. So a lot of the techniques that you use with it Free machine embroidery you can use with hand stitching bearing in mind that it's a lot quicker with a machine <laughs> things like that I would never attempt well I could if I was going for a long haul to do by hand that would be something that you simply would want to do with a machine I would say but yeah there's um, Venetian windows so you could take windows and doors as an inspiration and then try and recreate them in in layer and adding paint onto it as well and then stitching into it so that is a lovely lovely thing also notebook covers something that is close to my heart I love making notebook covers <laughs> cushion covers so these techniques can all be used in that and it's using let's have a look at the um, equipment so you've got needles and pins sewing machine scissors threads general equipment palette knives sponges and rollers and then it tells you about all the different paints and dyes you can use so that's layer paint and stitch by wendy dolan for the search press under the banner of the textile artist next this is one of my books this is expressive stitches a no rules guide to creating original textile art by jan dowson again search press jan dowson is awesome 
I love, love her work so much. And there's so much information and eye candy in this book, I can't even tell you. And these all are quite recent books. I think they started coming out in 2018, so they're all fairly recent. So experimenting with different media, mark making techniques, making a grid. 50 square challenge. That would be something to do if you wanted to do like one of these challenge times where you try one a day or one a week or something. You could do that in a year, couldn't you, if you did 50? I'd probably want to do it a bit quicker because I'd be impatient. But things like this are really cool. Uh, dyeing fabrics to match whatever you want using an embellisher. I don't know how many of you have got one of these. I've got an embellisher. I've not used it for a little while, but I use it to make my bigger felt pieces when I do those. So I grab that out to use. But using mark making with like a straight running stitch, that's beautiful. Love this and expressive projects, stitching a landscape. I think I've got another one of those as well somewhere. I'm developing a memory cloth, There's so much information. This is like birds, how to make a bird. I want to do one of these so badly. <laughs> I want to make a scrappy bird. Love. So this is on my list at some point. I really love Mr. Crow. <laughs> Look at him, he's so beautiful. So I want to do that. So that is one of my favourites, Expressive Stitches. No Rules Guide to Creating Original Text I Like from Jan Dowson. This is one of mine. This is probably one of the first books I got, which is Applique Art, Free Machine Embroidered Pictures by Abigail Mill. So this is mainly... Uh, using free machine embroidery to create these beautiful pictures but you're using scraps again which is something that I love so lots of different scraps of fabric you could use up to make these yeah so many so many different beautiful fabrics buttons threads embroidery hoops the sewing machine different bobbins inspiration color Again, we've got one of these recurring things, which is like the cakes I love. <laughs> and owls, look at him. He's so cute. So at the back again, you've got projects that you can do, that you can go by step by step. Um, again, just an awesome, awesome book. I love this series, a series of the textile artist books. I'd like to have a selection of all of them in my library at some point in time. Until then, like the ones I got previously, they will be um, from the local library. So I think I've got a couple of these from there, but I, I thought I'd look through them and see if they're going to be relevant to what I want. Let me straighten you up. You're doing a tilt, guys. There we go. Okay. Another search press book. This one is Stitch Textiles, and this is another series. So... On the inside of here, stitch, stitch textiles, you've got stitch textiles, flowers, birds, seascapes, nature and landscape. So whatever floats your boat, this is animals one. And Mrs. Bertimus, I think he's on Instagram, so if you want to go and look at some work of theirs. This is cool. It takes you through drawings, so doing your initial drawings, fabric collage, composition. Oh, Taking it into abstraction, this is like blissful, and I love this. And it's got lots of doggos in it, which I love. <laughs> Making your own printing plates. Annie, you've already done this already, I'm sure. Um, masks and stencils, telling a story. How to make the sausage dog. So these are some of the things that you've got an actual scrap that you can, you can use that sketch in order to create your own. So if you have a friend or you have a sausage dog yourself, ideal. But lots of doggos that you can then go on to, to make. The Midnight Fox, beaut, I love. That's the one that's on the front cover, isn't it? Highly recommended, Mrs. Bertimus, Stitch Textiles, Animals. As I say, there are other ones in the series. And I love that Search Press do these series of things because it does, um, 
make it highly interesting for somebody who's really, really into things like this because it incorporates a lot of mixed media. Now we're on to the Batsford books. Um, Batsford books have been my staple since I was at college and um, I went to an art college up north and um, discovered some of the Batsford books they had in their library and then started building my own and I have got a whole well, more than a bookshelf, two bookshelves full of Batsford books. <laughs> Some of these are mine. A couple of them are the libraries again. So let's start with one of these, which is a library one. This is Resilient Stitch. Now I've got two of these. I might have one on order, actually. Yeah, I think I've got another one of uh, Claire Wellesley Smith's books on order. Yeah from the library to check through. This is Resilient Stitch, Wellbeing and Connection in Textile Art. Now the Batsford books are more sort of informational with ideas. They don't give you projects as such, but they take you through a lot of methods that you can use, how to use this book. So you're looking at resilience in this particular case, but there's a lot of slow stitching in here using old fabrics and repurposing them, which is basically um, a superb thing, a scrap string, you know, tying and binding scrap, scrap string. Look at that. I love that so much. <sighs> I say this a lot, don't I? <laughs> Making hearts. Mend more, bin less. Mend more, buy less. Love it. So it's kind of used in demonstrations by the looks of it. Very cool. Repair dialogues, reinforcing to renew. Alice Kettle's work is lush. I love her work. And so she references her in this book. Ruth Singer. That's a really simple stitch, but creates words. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's words in the fabric so wherever you leave the, the negative space without any stitching it, it's a word inside there that's cool it's called forget i don't know if that comes out on camera or not um making from memory so hexes love hexes stitching as i say it goes through a whole whole deal so there is another one of these by claire wellesley smith i can't remember the title of it at the moment i don't know if it's still in here resilient stitch i don't know if that was the second one or the first one this is published in 2021 so maybe this is the second one but there's two books by claire wellesley smith under the batsford label resilient stitch this one I have got two of. The, <laughs> the covers on these are amazing. They're so soft and tactile. It's really like, feels like velvet on top. These are two by Shelley Rhodes. First one is Sketchbook, Sketchbook, ugh, Sketchbook Explorations by Shelley Rhodes. And this one is Fragmentation and Repair by Shelley Rhodes for mixed media and textile artists. And I'll just do a flip through of these. I love the way that she uses tags and one sheet sketchbooks. That's something that I love, loving the idea of, you know, breaking it down. Books, sketchbook manipulation, pockets and flaps, drawing with speed. So it's all the things that you can use in your sketchbook. The artist sketchbook is an exciting platform for exploring a host of mixed media techniques using a combination of paper top collage, textiles, found objects, pencil, ink and paint, and even dipping into the use of digital sketchbooks. Renowned textile artist Shelley Rhodes shows how a sketchbook can act as an illustrated diary, a record, a visual record of a journey, or as a starting point for more developed work. So that's that one, sketchbook inspiration, explorations. This one's fragmentation and repair. So this is more to do with the slow stitching part, uh, fragmenting text, folding, making changes, staining, altering surfaces, 
So it kind of builds on the first one, which was the sketchbook one, and this is like taking you into actual application. So it goes through Canva and Borrow, um, which is something that I've been looking into for the past year or so. Um, but yeah, those are both my books because I thought they were worth buying, and I have I have them pri proudly on my bookshelf. Okay. Textile Nature, another Batsford book. This is by Anne Kelly. Textile techniques and inspiration from the natural world. So plants, flowers, animals, um, nature in general. Look at that. Look at the stitch leaves. So this person takes leaves and then adds little embroidered stitches into them, which is really cool. You'd have to have a very steady hand with that. Uh, love all these i love all this kind of a plique stand of and then embroidery onto linen you get so much inspiration from these it's untrue and this is why i love them so much also takes you into people's sketchbooks but i love the idea of recreating um, a textile art journal that's something that's on my plans. Stitching them together like this. You know I've got a thing about accordion books at the moment, or concertina books. <laughs> love. So that might be an idea for something that I will do in the future. I love these birds as well. Papier-mâché birds. But then all the, uh, with a textile background, which would have been that. And an arc for birds and moths. That's superb. So that's Textile Nature by Anne Kelly, also a Batsford book. This one is Textiles Transformed with Mandy Palula. Pat Patula. I, Patulo. Oh, gosh, couldn't read that there. Mandy Patulo. I do apologise, Mandy, if I butchered your name. Um, textiles Transformed, Thread Thrift with Reclaimed tex Textiles. It's all of a similar theme, but so many different ways to look at it. This is basically this selection of books, isn't it? Telling a story. I love these collage pouch bags. These are superb. Look at them. And as I say, you don't get, you get ideas and you do get some general instruction, but these ones are mainly giving you inspiration, I would say. It's lovely. Just just eye candy to sit down with a cup of coffee and look through these. Is I just grab them out and grab a pile of them and sit with a cup of coffee. <laughs> Stunning, beautiful. And then the last one on my list is Textile Landscapes. This is Cass Holmes' book. This is recently got from the library, literally. And I think I'm going to purchase this one because I love it so much. Cass Holmes is like fabulous. They um, teach, I do believe, in, I don't think where she teaches. Not sure, I'm trying to figure that one out. Um, but yeah, this is a 2018 book, uh, Painting with Cloth. Introduction and In-Between World. I love that. They kind of have this surreal, kind of not quite real or super real feel to them, the pieces when you create them with cloth, it's kind of just um, accessing a different part of your brain, I think. It kind of locks into that bit that is kind of not on this earth and not off it. It's, it's aerial, it's sort of around and about us. Stitchscapes. This is good. So you have a base for your collage, which is watercolour paper, collection of images, prints and drawings. Tissue conversa uh, conservation tissue or tissue text, wallpaper paste, or a good quality book binder's glue, and a sewing machine with free motion for darning foot. I'm going to have to grab my machine out for some of these because I am supremely inspired by this. So I'll be out and around the coast. I'm also off around the Caribbean coast at some point, so I'll be taking lots of pictures to use for this and then recreating some of these pictures from my photographs. 
and probably taking the sketchbook out to sketch some bits as well. There, that's it. So that's the whole of my selection. As with the other book review I did recently, I will list all the books in the description if you want to try and find them. They're all fairly recent. If you can't locate one, you can probably get one secondhand, and that's something that I would recommend. Have a look in the secondhand section because some people buy these and don't get on with them for whatever reason. Resell them. Uh, World of Books is a great place to look because they are um, kind of sustainable as well. It's like they've saved so many trees. So that's a good place to look. I'll leave a link to World of Books down in my description also. Oh, I'll stop talking now and have a cup of a cup there. See, my teeth have stopped working as well. I will stop and have a cup of a sit down and I'm going to have a look through some of these books as well while I'm at it because I love them. Have a great day. I will see you very soon. Take care and bye for now.